so I decided to spoil myself. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna eat with you every day and not just on special occasions. Like you know our mothers did with those stainless steel pots that only worked once a year. Ah, oh, never. Summer bodies. Jim ah. up, Lewy. Do you mean long future savers, wealth builders, and yes, even you, future gazillionaires? I'm Tumi Murake, and welcome to I Grew It. Now, we all know how hard it is when the cents aren't making sense. But here, we make it make sense as we learn together to rewrite the story of our finances. In this episode, Ed No Swipes has credit issues, ne? but not the kind you're thinking of. Let's listen. To me, I never imagined I'd be sending this kind of voice note. But long story short, ever since I can remember, I always paid for everything with cash. Clothes, shoes, food, groove, everything is cash. I never owned a store card. Black Friday and December are around the corner and I've saved up enough to deposit for my first car. But the dealership said I don't qualify for a car loan as I don't have a strong enough credit record. I thought credit was bad, but now I see it actually means something good. Ish. I need to get plugged on this credit thing, do me, please. Plug me. I don't even know what a credit score is. But don't, at no swipes, that sounds like a very big mantras that you have. But don't worry, I got you. I've got the perfect plug for you. I've got here with me, Shaheen. So Shaheen, you are the guy when it comes to Islamic banking, right? And so I want to know, how did you end up being the guy when it comes to this sort of thing? And what is the difference between Islamic banking and traditional banking? To me, I don't know if I'm the guy or a guy. <laughs> I like to think of myself as a guy. Okay. So how did I get into Islamic banking? Well, I, I suppose there was just a plan bigger than me and that's how I got thrown into Islamic banking. But what is the difference between regular banking and Islamic banking? Essentially, Islamic principles don't allow interest, but they allow trade. So when I look at Islamic banking, it's based on the principles of trade. It's a different way of banking that's available to anyone who wants to try or ascribe to a different form of banking. Let me give you an example. You want to finance a car. Typically what you do, you go to a bank, you get a loan, you pay interest for the use of money, and that's how you buy the car. With Islamic banking, we do it on a trade basis. We buy the car, we rent the car to you over a period of time. You pay us a rent installment, and that's how we make a profit. At the end of the term, at a nominal amount, we sell the car to you. The end result is the same, but the manner in which we are able to do the financing is different. Oh. So it's about how you are more comfortable dealing with situations where there's big amounts that you have to deal with, right? Exactly that. So there's certainty in terms of what you pay on a monthly basis. Right. There's certainty in terms of how much you need to budget for the payment that you need to make on a monthly basis as well. Ah, okay. So now we're plugging at no swipes, right? And I mean, probably like most of us, he thinks credit is bad. That's why he's been paying cash for everything, hey. right? And now he doesn't have a credit score to get his car. I think I know what a credit score is, but I think it's better if you explain to us exactly what that is. For me, the easiest way to understand a credit score is if we look at a soccer game. Right. There's a score that happens in the soccer game. Why right. is there a score? So we know how one team is performing relative to another team. Uh. So what is a credit score? It's the way that you are performing. So how do you manage your finances? Based on the way that you manage your finances, a score is ascribed to you. Because we all love score. We all love to be competitive, right? Uh. So the better you are, the higher your score is in the soccer game, obviously the better you are. So similarly, the higher your credit score is, the better you are in managing your finances, in managing your credit as well. So you get, a, you get more or easier access to credit as a result of having a higher credit score. Ah, so now I'm scared to ask you this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. How is a credit score calculated? Like, am I about to get dizzy? <laughs> is it simple? <laughs> no, I think it's quite simple. So there's a few things that gets looked at by a credit agency. So in terms of if you currently have debt, how do you manage that debt? If you have a store account for clothing or whatever the case may be, do you pay that debt on time? If you have a rental agreement with your landlord, do you pay your rent on time? If you're missing payments, 
chances are very high that either the store that you're taking credit at or the bank that you've taken credit for or your landlord may acknowledge that you haven't paid on time, which affects your credit score. So the better your behavior is, the better it is for your credit score. The worse you are in terms of not paying on time, missing payments, etc., missing debit orders as an example, that adversely affects your credit score as well. So I definitely can't calculate that myself. But now I want to know something. If you have this terrible credit score where you didn't deal very well with your credit before, are you doomed? Is that it? Like no one will ever give you money ever again. You can never borrow. So to me, not at all. You're never doomed. Let's imagine it's half time and your team is 2-0 down. There's certain things that you can do to win the game, right? Because there's still enough time. So similarly, what you need to do is to make sure that you understand what are those factors that have given you a low or negative credit score. Maybe there's bills that you must make sure that you pay those bills. Maybe it means that um, you're not paying on time. Be more financially disciplined to ensure that if your debit order is due on the 25th, there's money in your account on the 25th so that when whoever you need to pay to takes the funds out of your account, it's available. So it's just about being responsible financially in understanding those elements that result in a negative credit score. Okay. But now with Ethno Swipes, his team is not even in the game. Like this guy, he doesn't even have a credit score, period. What can he do? So No Swipes is paying cash, mm. but he's great at soccer. He doesn't realize it is yet. So how does he get into the game? I think by starting small. As an example, he has a, a normal transactional account with a bank. Maybe take a credit card with a minimal amount that he can take on credit and start building a bit of a credit profile in terms of when an amount is due, like I said, paying it on time. When there's certain debit orders that are due, maybe because you said he's not playing the game, maybe load some payments through a debit order mechanism so that when it's due, he can prove that he's, be, he's able to pay those debit orders in time. It's all about financial behavior. So start proving by doing certain things that you're able to manage your finances efficiently and effectively, and that's how you start building up a credit profile. Okay, Shaheem. So if I understand you correctly, yeah, banking is something else. I have to spend money that isn't mine and pay it back on time to prove that I can be trusted to pay back the money that I want to borrow in the future. Something like that. Cha! At no swipes. Park the mattress, friend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shaheen. Thank you. We're going to discuss the log now with Shaheen. The soccer thing is serious. So, Shaheen, now imagine, ne? I'm at the bottom of the log. Now I just want to climb up on the log. What's going to happen, ne? Find out how to be more responsible with your spending and your borrowing with I Grew It. Absa, your story matters. Ooh.